Yo, what's going on YouTube? Technically T, bringing you another quick video, but I don't know how quick this one is gonna be, man, because you see the title, we gotta go ahead and talk about this Samsung Galaxy Fold. Now, I said I wasn't gonna make a video about this because foldable phones is just, just hideous and it's not really my thing. Not something that I wanna get into, but I feel like a lot of people are missing some key points out there that I feel like people should actually know. Now, all isn't bad when it comes to the Galaxy Fold. I'm gonna say that right now, man. I have a few things that I actually like about it, so we're gonna go ahead and jump into those real quick. Now, the first thing was the app continuity. Now, if you didn't see the presentation, man, do had Google Maps on the regular phone and then he opened it up, then boom, Google Maps is on the full, complete 7.3 inch or whatever big the display is. That was pretty dope. That seemed like a very smooth transition, man. So I kind of like that. Now, if it's, if it's that smooth, when it actually releases, then kudos to Samsung for that, man. But the app continuity, really, really like that. Now, even though I said it really wasn't my thing and I was kind of like, uh, when it comes to affordable phones, I have to say the design is pretty nice. Now, we saw the flex pie and we saw all the rumors of Samsung and how it was going to look. But the final version does look pretty good. I mean, I can't I can't really knock it. I can't say the thing is ugly. We already know Samsung makes beautiful devices and there's no different when it comes to the fold, man. It does definitely look good. I'm not really going to say sleek because it's a little bit on the thick side, but we're going to get into that. But for a final version of a first generation new type of technology, I do feel they did a pretty good job with the Fold, man. So good job, Samsung, and actually making it a pretty decent looking device. And another thing that I like is it's the next thing. Samsung is always giving us the next innovation, the next type of technology to come out. Now, do I want to see a whole barrage, a whole bunch of folding phones? No, I don't really want to see foldable phones like that. Me personally, I don't care for them. I don't really know the crowd that fits a 2000 to 26 hundred dollar crowd i don't really know what crowd that is but i do give them kudos for opening up a new version open up a new turn over a new leaf open up a new chapter of technology that i think that's going to be very very dope when it comes in the future so once again man samsung is always on top in front of the line when it comes to the innovation now that's just a few of the good things now let's kind of switch over to the bad now when i say bad it's just things that i personally don't like about it i'm not saying the device is bad this is just what I don't like about it. So let's go ahead and start off with the specs, man. You got 12 gigs of RAM, we have 512 gigabytes of storage, and we have a 43 milliamp hour battery. Now, you take all of those specs, you have all of those similar specs in smartphones that cost maybe, I'm not gonna say half, but it costs just a little bit cheaper than what you're getting for a 2K device. So truly, what are you getting paying that $2,000? I mean, you got phones that have 512 gigabytes of storage. I don't know if they make it upgradable. I don't, I don't really know. I didn't look at the keynote because that's how much I don't care about the foldable phone. Cell phones have that. You got 12 gigs of RAM. Doesn't the Top Dog S10 Plus have 12 gigs of RAM? I could be wrong, but I think it does. And if I'm wrong, that's because I didn't pay attention to a phone that was $1,600. But I think it does have 12 gigs of RAM. And then we're talking about 4,300 hour milliamp hour battery. Now, yes, 4,000 milliamps are about that sweet spot that we're starting to see on phones that last all day. But we're talking about a 7 0.3 inch device that's going to be a multitasking beast is that battery is that processor going to actually really conserve batteries they're really going to do a good job conserving that battery and can you get all day use out of that because if you're talking about using this thing as a powerhouse device and for two grand i would think that you're going to use this as a powerhouse device is the battery going to last because we're talking about two thousand dollar we already get into the price of me buying like a macbook or air or pro we, we're talking about that level so why would i go out there and spend two grand for something that I can do on a computer. But th that's that's just me. I'm just saying the specs, half of those specs you see in smartphones. So now you know we gotta talk a little bit about protection because you know your boy do plenty of case reviews on the channel. But just touching on this real quick, how are you gonna protect this thing? We're talking about a device that's already kind of thick when it's folded up. When you're talking about putting a case up there that's probably gonna make it a little bit thicker. Now I'm not expecting to see a bunch of cases, but I know Samsung is probably gonna make a case. You got your manufacturers such as Spigen and Autobox, some of the big names they're probably gonna find a way to make make a case out of this thing. But the thing about it is, why are you gonna add a case onto it to make it even more thicker than it already is? And if you don't run protection on it, then you run the risk of dropping and breaking your $2,000 device, your $2,000 phablet, your phone, phablet, tablet, whatever you wanna call it, you run the risk of dropping it and breaking it, man. So the ball is in your court with that one. Do you choose to run this thing naked or do you choose to put a coat on your $2,000 investment, man, and then make the phone even thicker than what it is? 
It's kind of up to you, man, but that's just the way I see it. Now, the main thing that I think people are really missing, and we are talking about Samsung updates. Now, you remember a while back when Samsung actually promised us that they were gonna push out updates in a timely manner since switching over to Samsung Experience, but let me ask you a question. Have you seen those updates being pushed out on a timely manner on the new Samsung experience. So we're talking about a new technology, a new device, a whole new thing when it comes to Samsung. You know sometimes some iron, it takes some you know, time to iron out the kinks. Now that's what they may be doing right now and this, that's probably why it's not out right now. They might be ironing out those kinks, but it's not gonna be perfect when it releases. So therefore, if you have a major bug, if you have a major issue, if you have a major glitch running that OS, that new OS on a new device, you're gonna need software updates in a timely manner. But Samsung has not gave us any software updates in a timely manner. So you're telling me that I'm gonna spend $2,000 on a device and you're not even giving me timely updates? Now, if they change that, then cool. They change it, cool. Everything is fine, man. But if I pay that amount of money, money, I want that thing to at least give me updates when I need it. Just like iOS, man. When there was a FaceTime bug in a week or so, it was done. Samsung is going to take forever unless it's a extremely major bug. So people, keep that in mind. I know you're going crazy over the new shiny, newest tech. I want to spend all my money and go spend it, but take a step back and really look at what this thing has to offer and what benefits are you getting out of paying that price. $2,000 first generation device, man. You got most specs that cell phones have in it. I think a lot of people are just going crazy and they're going for the cool factor, new tech factor. And I'm not knocking you. A lot of people are gonna come on this video and say, oh, you're hating because you can't afford it, blah, blah, blah. Pretty sure I can get it if I wanted to, but the thing about it is it's a pointless purchase for me because what does it do that a cell phone can't do? I don't need a 7.3 inch fabric in my pocket. If I want a three, app multitask i'll whip out a laptop and do my work there so why do i need to spend this money on this man and i saw a comment on another video and somebody left it and i meant to screenshot it but it's stuck in my head but the samsung galaxy fold is not a phone that folds into a tablet but instead it is a tablet that folds into an awkward phone now that to me was just right on the head he hit it really right on the head and that's exactly what I feel about this Samsung Galaxy Fold. If you're getting it, more power to you. I will watch the video, man. I will hit that thumbs up button. But for me personally, I know a lot of people have been asking me, am I getting the Fold? You will see no Galaxy Fold on this channel, man, because I just don't know what purpose that it serves besides you just wanting the latest and greatest in new technology. And I get it, but I'm not paying $2,000 just to say I got the new latest and greatest technology, man. But technically, T, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Are you all for it? Are you not with it? And if you are, why are you getting, what are your justification for paying that price tab? But technically, man, I'm going to catch you on the next one. Later.